who God is. That's the truth. You do what you saw, you pray, and you ask God what you're going to do politically, but you got to keep what God called you. You got to keep first things first. God comes first over politics. Politics do not have no grip on God. God is over politics. He said the government shall be upon his shoulder. He didn't say it was on ours. So we got to keep on moving. Keep on moving. Nothing can happen unless the Lord allows it anyway. Amen. Amen. That to win is to gain a victory, to prevail, to succeed in reaching or attaining a specified end or condition. Same thing we do in politics. You either win or you're going to lose, but it ain't no in between it. You know, I always want to know you lost. Mm -hmm. You either win or you lose. Mm -hmm. So why is it to see clearly what is right and just and to use sound judgment? That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Sound judgment. And the soul is the seat of intellect and emotion, and an individual or person, life or life force, especially in connection with the good. As Christians living in a, in a, a body, a holy lifestyle, we are a tree of life. Amen. We are a tree of life. Uh -huh. And so what we, are, we produce, it can't be almost an orange or almost an apple. It, it's either an apple or it's an orange. But it can't be no half and half. God didn't create nothing like that. It's not in the word anyway, because when you find it, please talk to me about it, because I haven't seen it. You know, I know they cross breed, but that's not what God created. See, we, what, what we do is one thing, but I said what was created. And, and that's not in, in the book of Genesis. It's not in the book of creation. It's not. So, as Christians, we are able to produce and reproduce after our own kind. After our own kind, don't mean it's two of us together. Uh -huh. <laughs> after your own kind. Uh -huh. As we walk out the life with a transformed heart and mind, we should be able, through our internal witness of the Holy Spirit, to attract others to Christ. Your life and that light within you, it should attract others to Christ. Yes. If you've been transformed, then guess what? Somebody can see that there's a difference yes. in you. Yes. If you, is nothing about you any different than it was when they saw you the last time, that's because you're still the same person you was the last time. And, and and people don't want to hear, hear the truth, but you know, the truth is going to make you free. Well, I'm going to hear yes, 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 I'm going to just keep it just like it is. Yes. A healthy tree bears healthy fruit. Yes. Now, you know, you see some trees, they don't do too well. Some of the, the branches start to, the leaves start to uh, turn check colors, and the fruit starts to rot right on the tree. Well, okay, that tree right there is a diseased tree. That tree is really good for nothing, and it's not going to do anything. Pruning a rotten tree is, is just a waste of time because most of the time the fruit is, is, is a mess. It's rotten, too. So when we come to God, we come to God just as we are. No matter what we've done, no matter how much is attached to us, God is not look. When we come, and we, he already know we're sinning, and you come to God and you ask God, you repent of your sins, God is not going to hold that thing over you. Over you need to, uh -uh, God, that's not the kind of God we serve. We serve a loving and forgiving God. Yeah. When you don't try to hide things from God because nothing is hidden from him anyway, he's omnipresent, so he's everywhere at the same time. You can't hide from him. So the wise thing would be to come to God and come clean. Yeah. God, I know you already know, but I'm going to say it anyway. I messed up. I messed up. I absolutely messed up. I didn't handle that the way that I should have handled it. But God, forgive me and help me. Because God, I don't want my witness to be tainted when people call my name. When my name comes up in circles or in rooms that I'm not in, I don't want it to be a negative report. Amen. Because I represent more than myself. I represent a holy God. Yes. I represent my leader. Yes. I represent the church that my name is attached yes. to. So you can't just walk in the way you want to walk. Yes. You got to walk according to the will of God. You got to walk in righteousness. You got to walk holy. Yes. Come on. So Amen. holiness without no man shall see God. You can't come through no back door. You can't. Come on, I'm just going to shake the past and go ahead and shake it. You had a nice handshake, but that's all you got. It's a dirty name because you don't know what he can do with that. All right. All right. So, and y'all better not play because I'm telling you, we are in a time where people are just doing crazy stuff. Nowhere in the Bible did it say you.
you walk up to a pastor and shake their hand and you have salvation. It's no, no, not in the word. Go ahead. And we we doing crazy stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> healthy fruit. Go ahead. Produced by healthy tree. And where the word of God is being taught and uncompromised, <coughs> and and we're preaching sound doctrine. Yes. That church is going to flourish. Yes. yes. And people think that it's about the numbers, no, it but it no. really is not. No, it's not. Okay. It isn't about the numbers. Uh -huh. Because what's full to you is not full to God. What's empty right. to you is not empty to God. Because his mind, his ways are so much higher. And his mind, his thoughts are so much tougher than ours. What you see hey, full, God may see it all the way full. Right. Because he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows when the people are going to come. He also knows there those that are coming and that's going to leave. As soon as right. they get there, once they get what they want. Uh -huh. He already know that part too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not picking up such... Uh, much about going out specifically. Sometimes we need to go out to witness. Because again, we're to win souls. If Christ saved us, would you, do you want your sisters and brothers to be lost? No, none of us should. Because Jesus gave his life. He didn't desire that any be lost, but that all come to the knowledge of the truth. Almost witnessing to a person. Uh -uh, you keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Because I went through this. Uh, week after week, we went to this lady's house in Temple Hills, Maryland, and the lady would slam the door in our face. I'm telling you, that evangelism to me, no joke. I'm telling you, that she slammed that door in our face week after week. But I tell you that one Saturday we went, she actually let, came out on the, on the, in the door, and she talked to us. We led her to Christ that day, but now we had been going for months. Because we, we took different sections of the town, and our team, we did it by teams. So then we would go back and meet back up. Now, that's what happened. The next day, this was Saturday, the next day, the next day, no man knows the no day of the hour that the son of man shall appear. The next day, she was crossing the street, and she was killed. The next day. What are we doing up and not going back? The next day, she was dead. You can't give up on people. But she keeps shutting the door. And it's her door. What if, do you know why you are out there? If you know your purpose, don't worry about what she's doing. Just accomplish your purpose. Accomplish it. Keep going back. What if God felt that way about us? What if he gave up on us every time he told us to do something and we closed the door in his face? He knocked many times on my door and I sure didn't open. I, I ain't ready. All right. I said, I'm not ready. I said, I don't like, uh -uh. I'm too young for that. I said, look, right. I still want to go out and I want to have fun. All and right. I sure wanted to go to the club. Now that I did enjoy. Right. And I, look, I, look, I, I, said, I said, oh, I'm not a drinker. I said, well, why am I comparing out as opposed to I'm still just a loss of those in here that is drinking? But I was comparing out. Well, I don't drink. All I do is come in here and dance. I'm feeling sin. Right. You don't have no special sin to God. Sin is just sin. Amen. But I'm telling you, I was trying to reason my way out of hell. And I don't want to spread the hell out of everybody else. Come on, Roger, where they had a right. drop. Roger, why do you go? You, you don't drink. I said, I don't want to drink. I go there and dance. And they drink. And I ain't got nothing to do with that. But again, you see how easy it is for us to get distracted. Yeah. And we think that because we're not doing the same thing, that God ain't going to bear you that sin. The standard don't change for you because you got a different vice. Yeah. Whether you on uh, alcohol, crack, yeah. PCP, I'm, I'm, I don't care whether you raping, cursing, adultery, I don't care what it is. Sin is nothing but sin. Whether you lying, stealing, cheating, whatever. If you're getting up here, you got one doctor for your family and one for everybody else, you're still in sin. Because that's not the word of God. God is no respect of person. He loves everybody the same. If it's a sin, it's a sin for the whole house. It's a sin for the whole body of Christ. Hallelujah. Almost is not enough. Don't just almost tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. What they do with it is on them. And in Acts 26, it says, and 24 says, and as he thus prayed for himself, that's 
to say what well, I was Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. Now he's trying to say that Paul is out of his mind. So Paul is, is uh, preaching and teaching holiness and sound doctrine. But we always know Paul didn't always do that because no, his name was changed until it. He had that Damascus Road experience. Yes. Uh, Paul was a bad man of yeah. He was. He didn't pray. I mean, he was persecuting the church. Yes. Here we have Apostle Paul speaking up for himself in the message of Christ that he believed, but it was not appreciated by the Jews and not believed by the Gentiles. Paul was actually taking a risk. Festus was a Gentile, and he was in essence saying that, Paul, you lost your mind. You must have lost your mind. And verse 25 said, but he said, I am not man, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. I'm telling you truth, and I am sober of mind. Uh -huh. Amen. Clearly and calmly, Paul denied the accusation made by Festus. The world do not appreciate the things of God. They are foolishness to them. Apostle Paul stood up for what he said and for what he knew was right. He followed God when he made up his mind to follow God. He didn't almost follow God. He followed him all the way. He can almost do a job. If, if, if an overseer tell you, assign you something to do out here, if you say, well, I, I did not get part of it, but um, um, I got the, I, I didn't do the rest of it. Well, you didn't do the job. Just say, I didn't do the job. Because if he said, do the job, that means the whole job. The job is not done until you complete it. So, so again, that's disobedience. You did not do the job. Amen. That's right. Wrong spirit. But he said, I'm not mad. <laughs> Clearly. And in verse 26, it says, For the king knows of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was done, was not done in the corner. I didn't preach it all high. I preached out in the open. So when I talked about Jesus and I talked about salvation and I talked about uh, what the right and what was wrong and how things were supposed to be done. I didn't hide it because if you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. So when you're speaking the gospel and you don't have to compromise the word of God to keep people in seats because if they get up, they're not supposed to be sitting there. And if they leave, guess what? You need to open the door for them. Because if, if they're going to compromise God and risk going to hell to tell you what you want to hear, it's bye-bye so long. Because really, truly, that's not what the word of God is about. It's about winning souls for the kingdom. We're supposed to be soul winners. He said he that winning souls is wise. Yes. Wise. How do you think all these people would add it to the church daily? Because they were preaching and teaching the gospel. And people were following them. Why? Because they were actually being told the truth. And the truth is what made them free. And only the truth will draw you. If you've been told lies, you know why you're drawn there? Because you think you have no salvation. If a lie draws you, it's because you just like the person that's telling you. You're a liar too. Amen. 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 He, he knew. He knew. Yes. In other words, Paul was saying, I know I was not hiding these things from you. Yes. King Agrippa 27 said, Believe in thou the prophets. I know thou believe. It. I know you believe. It. King Agrippa, you do believe it. So why are you acting like you don't know about it? <laughs> Apostle Paul making it clear that he do not doubt the king believed the prophet. He knew that he believed them. Come on. He believed the prophets in the Old Testament. Now, how could you, King of Earth, charge me to death for believing the same as you believe? Yeah, all right, all right. Now, how are you going to charge me for believing? How can the Jews find anything worthy of death than this? I've done nothing wrong. If you've done nothing wrong and you're following the word of God, I don't care what they say. Amen. You stand. Yes. You stand. Because if you're holy, and death, Preach. look, and death come, so be it, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. But if you die in sin, hell still will be your home. I'm not going to lie, my mother, father, sister, 
brother. You make your bed, you will lay in it. But don't ever put a positive name in it because if they call me, like I said all week, so help me God, I'm going to tell the truth or die trying. And I really mean it. I will not tell a lie for nobody. I'm not doing it. You bring it to me, I'm going to expose you. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Yes, sir. Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. It is clear that Apostle Paul had made a great impact on the king by the statement that he was almost persuaded. Paul had been talking about what he believed in the prophet, and King Agrippa had heard it. He was affected by it, yet a part of him was still not willing to surrender totally to the ways of God. He wasn't, he wasn't willing. Just like some of us, we, we've heard, we, many of us heard the word long before we actually changed our life, and gave our life to Christ. But well, let me just say, why don't you talk about me? I heard it many years before I gave my life to Christ. But when I did and I was in, I knew I was in. Hallelujah. But I heard it many times because my mother was holy. So I lived in a holy, a half holy household. All right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, look, All right. don't look at me like that. I said, half holy. I said, at the end of the day, I said, my mother was holy. That's all. Yeah. And I'm going to leave it just that. And I love my daddy all to pieces. <laughs> I tell you, Paul had definitely given him something to think about. He was very serious of Paul, very serious about the work of God. And we have to be, we, we, I mean, this world right now, the way it's going, you know you see what's going on around you. You see all these drugs in this neighborhood. You see all these drug addicts hanging around, walking the street all day long. You hear about all of these murders, all of this shooting, all of this stuff going on even in the school system, in the churches. You hear all of these people now got these great big mega churches. Do you know these mega names now are in the forefront because many of them now, they are being uh, all of that stuff that was going on yeah, behind closed doors, do you know uh, God is exposing it? Like, and they said, oh, it's a lie. Oh, no, it's not a lie. You was doing it because I knew what was going on. And I also knew that God was going to expose you. But God's timing is perfect always. He you knows exactly when, why, and how. Yes, I don't tell no lie. I mean, it's one of the one of the major uh, big time names right now is locked up in jail. But guess what? He's locked up, but his belly is full of secrets. Right. And I mean, a big name celebrities and church pastors yes. as well. Yeah. Before long, he gonna sing like a mockingbird. Right. And what he do? Watch. Everybody know it because yes. it's all over the place. Yes. You know what? I said, and he gonna be missing That's because they can true. make you disappear. See, money, money has a way of making people disappear. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said, I said, we can be wise or we can be foolish. Just like the pastor preached about the ten virgins. You better make sure you got oil in your lamp. You better make sure that you're not almost, well, you know, I'm almost running out. You know, you, know, you see a light come on that says uh, it turns orange. You know, you need to stop and go ahead and put some fuel.